I love Sam Hanna, but uh, he was very unfair. He asked me to talk about this topic. And I'm going to read it because I'm not going to cover except two words. Comforts are often the stealthy and too many little hidden addictions that go unrecognized. Therefore, go untreated for a lifetime. They become what keep us from being fully in fellowship with God. They can include any of the following. Media, rich food, overeating, fear, laziness, procrastination, feeling of defeat of inferiority, pride, excessive sleep, selfishness, luxury. And you get the point? I mean, basically he put everything in the whole world. I'm supposed to talk about <laughs> So what I did is I'm going to talk about this word, and I thought a lot of these can be covered by this word. And I'm going to use it in, I, I, I have, I, I, and I put some Arabic words, and lately we have a lot of Arabic speaking, in, at least in high school, so. Um, so I'm going to talk about laziness, and I'm going to talk about lack of contentment. And that's almost cover, not everything he requested, but there is no way I could have covered everything. Um, so, um, Solomon said something very interesting. He said, the lazy man does not roast what he took in hunting. Yani, he hunts, but then he does not even roast. He just sits like this, and hopefully it gets better by itself. But diligence, and that's the opposite of laziness, is man's precious possession. He also said something about the roof. Because of laziness, the building decays. And that's what I want to talk about, which is really the collapse of spiritual life due to laziness, due to kasab. How our spiritual life is in major jeopardy because we are a bunch of lazy people. That's exactly what we look like. And that's what I want to talk about. What do you think the reasons of laziness? Easy. Easy life. What else? Because it's cold outside. Lack of motivation. Because huh? it's cold outside. It's not cold outside. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, what else? I heard two, two reasons of laziness. What else? Lack of motivation. Uh, easy life. Fatigue. Fatigue. Okay, I didn't think of those. <laughs> Saint, uh, Saint, uh, I mean, uh, Solomon said the same thing. Look at this. This is exactly describes how lazy we can become. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall your poverty come on you like a prowler and your need like an army. Yani, shwaya kida, shwaya kida, shwaya kida. And after a while, you don't want to do anything in your spiritual life. So, this is the, almost a diagnosis, almost like David here was like a doctor. You come to him and say, I'm very lazy. So he diagnosed the laziness in a very um, systematic kind of sequence. He said, this is what happened to you become lazy. You were walking, then you stood, then you sit. In your spiritual life, you were walking, and then you didn't think that you could walk long. So you start standing up talking to people, and people are passing you by. And then finally, you just sit still and you do nothing. I was just talking bad about you, Sam, by the way. I'm sorry. I was just talking bad about sorry, you. Sorry, I missed it. <laughs> no, nothing. Uh, I was saying I love you very much, but you asked me to talk about um, this, much this much things. Wow, okay. And I found myself not able to speak except about this word sure. and this word. So, we are now at the laziness. So let's get going. We're talking about the reasons of the laziness. And the first thing is, it's infectious. It's, I mean, I'm, I'm talking to you as if you are my young brothers and sisters. Every 
single time I get lazy, it started by one step slower. Like I was running. But I said, do I have to run? Maybe I should walk. But then, do I have to walk? Maybe I should just stand still. And then you find yourself sitting down or sleeping. Or I infect him, Paul. He was running. I said, stand with me. And then we find Aida sitting. Said, let's go sit with Aida. Again, I'm not talking about physically. I'm talking about we see a person who running, and we bring him down to stand, and then we bring him down to sit still. And unfortunately, we infect each other with our laziness. Procrastination, and this is one of the points that Sam brought in his email. Look at, look at exactly, Uncle Samir and I were, were looking at some of the minor prophets, and Haggai was really a guy, all his prophecy was about how long you guys would build your own house and do not build the house of God. Procrastination. Thus speaks the Lord of hosts, saying, This people says the time has not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Yani, it's not the time yet. It's not my time to change. It's not my time to uh, begin a new life. Next year. Next time. Another reason. And that's what I think was said by Mariam. Um, I think she meant one of the reasons for, for laziness that I'm giving up. I tried, I tried, I failed, and I failed twice. So I'm not doing it anymore. I sit down and I do nothing. I give up. Or I even give up, give up, give up, so I'm depressed. I don't want to see people. I don't want to go out. All what I do, I met a guy who was in third year college. He failed two semesters. So what you know what he's doing now? He's playing X, uh, uh, Xbox all the time. <laughs> all the time. Wow. Not, not two hours, six hours. <laughs> and when you ask him what's wrong with you, he said, I, I went from laziness to laziness to depression to giving up. It's a cycle. And what Sam have put for us in the, although I cannot cover all of them, but it's all a bunch of group together of me losing interest. Look at this verse. This is Elijah, by the way. Elijah was the fiery, we call him the fiery prophet. I mean, there isn't more fiery person than Elijah. He's like fire. One time he said, then he lay and slept under a broom tree. Suddenly an angel touched him and said, what's wrong with you? Actually, why are you here? Why did you reach here? Why are you depressed? And he said things completely un unrelated. He said, oh, they killed all your prophets. Actually, he's the one who killed all the prophets. <laughs> exactly the reverse. He said, and they are, um, and they, um, uh, destroyed all your temple. And he just destroyed their temple. But it's for him, inside him, I'm depressed. I'm giving up. So even prophet can go into depression. This is what John said. Convenience. One of the reasons for luck, for um, laziness, is being like uh, exactly what Sam put, uh, really rich food, uh, air condition and all the things that he put I want to be in my comfort zone so if anyone tell me let's go to Bronx there is a, a line up uh, in, the, in January to give soup that's too cold man I can't go or why should I leave Saturday to wake up at uh, 9 o'clock to do this no 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 I mean it's, it's comfort look at the look and I will say to my soul, soul, you have many goods. Who said that, by the way? The rich man. So the, the stupid rich man, the foolish rich man. That's a parable, by the way. That's a parable. But soul, you have many goods laid up for many years. Take, take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. And God told him, you are stupid, you are foolish. 
Why? Because who told you it's for many years? I say it's for many years or today. You know? So that's another reason. One of the other reasons for um, um, laziness that I really I'm only thinking that God is good only, but he's not fair. Uh, I mean, he's not a judging God. And by the way, that's a very common fallacy in the Western civilization. If you hear any um, channel, the, uh, a Christian channel, very little talk about God's judgment. But God is a father, God is a shepherd, God is the loving king, God is a friend, God, which is true. But the problem is we lose the fear of God. So now I'm talking about just a friend, but the savior and a king, and at one time he's going to be the judge, the just judge. You know, the, um, the, the, uh, we, we say in the liturgy something very interesting. I read something about it, very strange. You know, we say that your mercy, O Lord, and not uh, according to your mercy, not according to our sins. One of the fathers wrote something very interesting. He said, the number of people who will be perished by God's mercy, mercy is, is more than those who will perish by God's fairness. Because it's abuse. Do you understand the point? Yeah, God is merciful, God is merciful, God is merciful. So I forget, I forget, I forget. I, for, I don't repent, I don't repent, I don't repent. And all of a sudden, I am lost because of God. Assumingly, I'm as abusing God's mercy, but the person who puts God's fear before his eyes, and every time as the nightly prayer we say, every time I stand before the just judge, trembling and scared from my many sins, that's what we pray in the nightly prayer, right? The midnight. There is no fear before their eyes. Of course, in Revelation, we have another reason for it's a lack of loss of the first became, love. Yeah, first love. Yani a person who became callous. You know, in medicine, there is a very, when, when, when a joint become not just inflamed and inflamed and then leave it and then blood comes here, the blood becomes calcium. We call it callous. Now you can't move it anymore. And you can it, it's nothing happened. You don't feel anything. Now we become callous. We become emotionless or lost our first love. I know your works that you are neither cold nor hot. You lost your first love. So one of the reasons for, for laziness, um, I don't love people anymore. I don't care about people. And you tell him, so-and-so lost his father, yeah? Oh, okay. So-and-so is in the hospital. Okay, how's he doing? What about you? So and so is a homeless. Yeah, why should I care? I'm going to whatever place now. You know the dissociation completely between me and loving the other. And then me and loving God. You tell him there is a midnight prayer, there is a prayer meeting, there is a this. So it, I lost interest in this. All of this I'm only talking about Laziness, which combines many of the things that Sam requested. Okay, this is also very interesting. This is, by the way, it happens. We read it a lot in the in the Passion Week. This part, Proverbs twenty six, happens to be two chapters, very similar idea. The lazy man says there is a line in the road, a fierce line in the streets, as a door as a door turns on its hinges. So does the lazy man on his bed. The lazy man buries his hand on the bowl uh, and it wearies him to bring it back to his mouth. Yani, he's supposed to eat, but this, yani, you know, this, even, um, that's how we. And then the problem is there is a line outside. Okay, I'm going to be dying. I'll, I'll be dead anyway. Like, I'm going to go to hell anyway. You know, the, the devil is so strong, uh, what can I do? I mean, the, these ideas, I'm going to go to hell anyway. Why try? Why repent? 
Why move? Why change? Why, why do anything? And we became a bunch of lazy bunch of people. You want to shake the guy. Move it, man. What's wrong with you? No feelings. No umph. You know the umph? No, nothing. He's like, you tell him there is a line in the street. Oh, what can I do? That's it. You are dead now. That's it. OK, move to our next point, which is why laziness is dangerous. Anyone wants to comment on this? Here I go. Why it's dangerous. So I told you the reasons of laziness. And the first danger? Lukewarm. Very good. So it could be a, a result or a, a, a cause. OK. What else? Ten. Sorry, John. What do you mean by that? Give me an example. Are you talking about laziness as a lifestyle or laziness yes. as a... It's really as a lifestyle more than anything, okay. yes. Yeah, I'm saying like it could basically affect your, your work, your school... Yeah, too much time in hand and uh, you use it in the wrong way. So for example, you, you used to be an A student, you become lazy, and then now you failed classes or you wanted to go to a certain job and they need certain achievements and you don't do it. Okay, let's show you a couple of things. One of the things that laziness can result to, or the danger, that it, it will make us become, uh, look at this, whoever has to him more will be given, but whoever does not have even what he has will be taken away. Does anyone understand this verse? This is not an easy verse, by the way. Yani, God will take away what you got. Yes. Actually, this refers to the parable of the uh, servants. There was the three servants. The talents. Who, yeah, the talents. And one servant who buried his talent and was afraid to invest it or use it, he gave it back to his servant that he was called the slothful and wicked servant. And his talent was taken away from him and given to the one who multiplied his talents uh, to ten talents. So what does that mean to, to me, who I'm a lazy person? What can it be taken from? I mean, you, you, thank you for summarizing or giving the background of the verse. Now I need you to explain this to me. Um, whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away. What is that example, John? So even if, um, even if you don't have anything, though, whatever good you might have can be taken away from you because of some yes. bad habits. So let me give you an example. You used to be a very loving person by nature. Yani, it's not the Holy Spirit give you. You are coming from a loving family. You love people. You are a very smiley person. You have a soft heart. You know, if you become lazy, later on, you don't have this love to people. The natural love, the natural, easy, Philadelphia type of love, brotherhood love, can be taken away from you. You are a meek person, heady, calm, um, you don't get aggression, aggressive, you, you, you take it easy with everything. That can be taken away from you. After a while, you say, what's wrong with you? You changed. You changed because even the natural things, the natural things that you normally got, you lose it. And sometimes we meet each other after years and say, what's wrong with you? You used to be very nice and, 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 and Latif, the kind. Why you are not kind anymore? It was taken from you. You lost it. Guys, I'm telling you, this is very serious. We sometimes think laziness is just a, a modern sickness. It's the sickness of um, those modern countries. Of course, that's wrong. It happens everywhere. But this is a style of life that if it catches you, you really lose a lot. And you could lose even your godly, natural talents that you have. You are a sympathetic person. When you feel somebody is upset, you come and cry without godly. It's not because of God. After a while, things you don't feel anything. You, you lose it. And that's what we are worried about. That the natural talents that we were given, that we're supposed to enhance with the Holy Spirit, 
after a while because you are not thriving it, you lose it. So either you have it and you grow it, or you, or you lose it. What, look at what David, David, the king, the prophet, the, the poet, the, 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 the one who has a heart like God. Can you imagine he has a heart like God? When he became lazy, he fell in the worst sin. He killed, committed adultery. Guys, I don't think I need to tell you examples. All of us, while he's seated now, all of us think of himself what he did when he became lazy. The last time I didn't move it, what happened to me? What did I fail in? Where I am today, just everyone think about this, today, November or October 2012, and what about October 2007? How was I, how I was? How was I very sensitive when I make a, a mistake? Would I get very upset? And what I am today? Huh? Would I feel bad when I lose a liturgy? And what I am today? What happened is, because Adam, not Adam, I mean David, it happened one evening that David arose from his bed, walked on the roof, and you know what happened after. Killed, committed adultery, all of this because laziness. Okay, the next thing is when you become lazy, you you get the seed, but you never um, follow it. Yani, you heard something today, or you read something today. You supposed if you are not lazy, you you do something about it. Like let's let us assume. We are talking about the spiritual program and how to avoid laziness. If it hits you, you do something about it today. But if, it, if you are lazy, all what it did, it fell in the wayside, birds came, devoured. that's it. And by the way, we have so many birds and we have very little seeds being implanted. All the seeds are just on the surface. I mean, if I, if I ask every single one if anything what I'm saying today is new, I doubt. You have known these things all along. What do we do with these things? Nothing. You know why? Because they are all on the wayside. It's knowledge. It's just the information. But I'm not using it to change from losing them because they are being devoured. Today, before we go home, Whatever we are saying, whatever we are thinking, whatever we are hoping to promise myself and God, they are going to be devoured before I go home. Why? Because I'm just a lazy person and I'm not planning to change because the change takes a lot of power and energy. Even we Americans say if you don't use it, lose it. Right. Very simple. Um, okay, one of the other things is, and, and, and I want to submit to you, and, and please, I'm not trying here to claim I know a lot of you closely. But I submit to you, a lot of us are very depressed. A lot of us. Not me. Very <laughs> <laughs> Now. <laughs> Don't give it to me. OK. Um, the reason what I'm saying depressed, I mean not depressed needing medications, but depressed meaning Nothing make you happy. <coughs> not a good meal, not a good friend, not a good car. It's okay. The problem is we lost the zeal, the umph, the feeling, the sensitivity. We became hard hearted because we, we stayed too long on the wayside because we are very lazy to deepen the seed inside. It takes work, it takes plowing, plowing. It takes really removing of stones and thorns and garbage and junk and all of this. Just put the seed, khalas, and then the seed is on top of tar, cement, concrete, nothing. And then we wonder why we are the same. Why we why wouldn't we hear 
that the whole church is praying hard for something, I don't feel like I care. Why when I hear somebody is really about to be lost or very sick, I don't feel it. I don't do anything about it. I don't ask what do I do, what can I do. What happened to us? We became very hard-hearted. Now let's get to the, to the bottom of it. The first thing is, and you can call it any way you want it, but Solomon called it this way. The hand of the diligent will rule, but the lazy man will be put to forced labor. Meaning, you really need to start working. Yani, move it. Move it. Don't stay still. You know that there's something paralyzing you, a friend, a habit, a, a type of style. Move it. Change it. Drop it. Put yourself in a real spiritual program. <coughs> Remember your first day. I mean, first day, I mean, the past day when, when you used to read the Bible with, 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 with joy or with uh, passion. Remember the day when, when, when you don't come to the liturgy, you feel bad. And come back to that. Nothing wrong. Okay, khalas. Whatever happened, happened. Let me come back to this. Don't keep crying over spilled milk. I'll come to the spilled milk that's coming now. Okay. We have to we have to re Did you remember Moses when he stood before the burning bush? I heard this this sermon many years ago from a non Coptic father. I don't know if Uncle Sami remembers it, but he was a not Coptic father. He was I think either Russian or Rami, I don't remember. But something he said, very strange. He said, renew your wonder. And he picked on that God told Moses, take off your sandals. His whole lecture about the sandal. That you are coming to the burning bush, so what's new, I mean? Take off your sandal, meaning renew your wonder, renew your passion, renew your fear towards God fear towards God. The fear that I don't want to fall in sin. Fear from judgment. Can you imagine, can you imagine, and please think about this seriously alone. What if you don't go to heaven? Just think about it, please. Please, I urge you to think about it. What if you do not go to heaven? A box closed on you, you are now in a box dead. None of us with you. You are alone before the just judge. And he tells you, you are not belonging to heaven. Isn't that so scary? It's scary. It's so scary. I mean, we should be so scared not to go to heaven. We have to work hard not to be judged that we do not belong to heaven because he has done everything for us. Whatever is left is fragments for us to do. He has done the whole thing the cross, the grace, the everything. All what's remaining, respond. Fear. Be, be, yani, respond to his cross. Respond to his grace. Respond to his sacraments. But we, we never think of condemnation. And that's something you, we need to renew. Do I, if, if, can you imagine I don't go to heaven? Oh my God. It's like you're gambling with, with heaven. You know when people gamble, they get a credit card, then they take off the watch, then they take <laughs> off the pants and whatever. And then the last thing, he puts the lien of the house. That's his house. That's all that he got. Can you imagine we play with that card? We put heaven. I'm gambling. I'm gambling. I, I may lose it. Next is Obedience to, to anything, anything and anyone. The, I mean, we became a bunch of people who keep philosophizing, arguing. Everyone argues about everything. Nobody, say, nobody says, yes, sure, I will do it. Go and do something. We say, read the Bible, read the Bible. Don't keep saying why and when and how and I don't understand. Just read the Bible. Pray, pray. 
attend the liturgy, attend, confess, confess. The point is, how long are we going to keep arguing about things that could n stop us from going to heaven? Can you imagine just obedience to someone telling you something could take you there and your stubbornness could take you nowhere? Okay, the second part of the, of the, of the, lack of the discussion. I don't know if you know this picture. Does anyone know? This is a snake, by the way. And let us say this is Aaron. I'm not sure if Moses is in the picture or not. Does anyone know the picture? This one? Okay, so, yes. You know when it came straight into the eyes of the guy? Yeah, this is when uh, God told Moses, bring a bronze snake and lift it up, and it was a s symbol of the cross. Whoever is beaten by the snake, if you look up to the bronze cross, you are healed. But the problem here was all about complaining. These people complained so much that God and Moses and Aaron and they brought us here and we used to eat better and we are coming here to be buried in the desert and we, we were eat. They didn't like anything. Even the s s uh, manna and all of this. So they complained as some of them complained and were destroyed by Israel. I want to talk to you about complaining, which is the final part which I called it lack of contentment. Contentment for the Arabic speaking, yani Adam al-Rida, or tazammu. Adam al-Rida ahsa. Okay, so, complaining, this is again was, uh, again I was trying to compile the 15 reasons <laughs> for me to accept the uh, uh, Sam's uh, lecture. You did a good um, job, man. 15, 15 things I was trying to cover. But I thought a lot of them could be covered under this head. You know what? We never, we are always not happy, not content. I ask any one of you, just don't answer me. Are you content with what you have, what you got, what you are in today? She's content not with her hair, with her body, with her weight. With, he is not content with his muscles, with the the girl he wanted to love and she doesn't love him and he's content with his studying and he's not content with the church. No one is content with anything. And everybody's complaining. Everybody's complaining. And this is what the big problem, at least in the Old Testament, they were about to be destroyed because they kept complaining. So it's a deadly sin. They didn't believe. And they kept, if I complain, Marty will complain will be complaining, and the next uh, anger, and the next mean anger, I'll make you all complain. You know, if one of us, just one of us, and it's becoming a rarity, but he will, uh, this is not working, and this, and this, uh, thank God, everything is working with me. I'm, I'm really, I don't know how to thank God. It's, it's, it's doing very well. Said, what? You're not complaining? <laughs> I mean, what's wrong with you, man? But the problem is, we, we, we infect each other. Exactly like the first one. We keep infecting each other. Contagious. That's all of these people. Kept telling each other, complain, complain, complain. And it's becoming a pandemic. Epidemic. By the way, this is one of the attributes of the devil. Tawa. Tawa. Very true, and I think I have this. Okay, so, very important, please, Forget even giving, I, I meant blessings. Yani. There, there is a guy in, in this street that I visited two, three times. And I thought I'm going there to serve. He is a guy who fractured his leg. And um, by the way, he's not just fractured his leg. He was working in a, in a, in a I don't want to say the exact detail, but in a place. And then some guys came, and with a bat, they fractured his both legs. And he was trying to protect the boss. And then they asked me, want to sue? He said, no, I, wanna, I don't want to sue. So he is in the hospital, went to the hospital. He has a big contraption outside. It's like one of those metals. The other leg is not as bad. This leg is very bad. So I'm going to visit him. I mean, come on. I'm a servant. I'm going to visit. So I am, I am the... I'm the one who's giving. I was so 
astonished because I was nothing compared to this man. I sat there learning every single thing from this man as if I have never served in my life. Very thankful. I tell him, Malisha, I'm a fulan, uh, it's, it's hard, uh, three, four months now, and he goes, thank God, I'm better than a lot of people. He hasn't been working four months, and he has three kids, and his wife doesn't know one word of English. Um, uh, uh, how's your leg? Oh, thank God, everything is fine. There is infection, but thank God. I mean, the leg is red, looks infected, the infection is about to reach the bone. What is going on? I had me. I was sitting there. I felt I'm learning primary grade service again. Thank God. Because this is a guy who cannot forget God's giving. The Bible next to him, his wife serving him, and he is smiling, thankful, grateful. The kids come and play. They kiss their dad. They go and play. What's going on? I visit other people. Another another family, the kid comes at 3, 4 a.m. in the morning. The girl, who knows what she's doing, her mother doesn't know what how bad things she's doing. The mom and dad, and they are not thankful at all, and everybody's complaining, and they are not happy at all. And this family, who has 1% of, of the gains of the first family, are very peaceful and happy and content, and not complaining. What's going on? Where is the formula? The Help me out here, guys. The problem is, a lot of us are forgetting that God is giving, that we have a lot of blessings. This guy is counting his blessings, although I am sitting there, came with a car, walked, and inside here, I thought, that Benjamin is bad. He doesn't have anything compared to me. And I left feeling this guy is richer, healthier, happier, content, more than me. You know why? Because he knows that God is so giving to him, although he looked from outside, he should be the, the complainer. And he didn't complain once. Oh, our problem, our problem, that we always complain each, uh, compare each other to the, to the next. Why I'm not like him? Why I'm not like her? Why Shmanaho? Shmanahe? And that leaves us with what? Which leaves us with complaining all the time. How would you know that you were not given what she got? Because if you got what she got, you will not be able to carry on. Who, who said if you have to receive the blessings of the other person, you will be in a better shape? Who said that? Who said that? Um, greedness. Yani, I want more. There is no content. There is no satisfaction. Nothing makes me happy. If I have a thousand, I need ten thousand. If I have a car, I want two cars. If I have a good car, I have a better car. If I have a, a wife, I have a. Be I need a, a, a more better looking person. I, there is no end. There is no end. And I'm telling you this because I want you to be happy. And I know a lot of you are not happy. And you are not happy because you are always complaining and you are always comparing. And you compare to the other person. How would you know that God is your father? He could have easily given you what he had. But he didn't because he knows if you get, something worse will happen to you. Why are you comparing? Um, okay. Let, let us just keep talking. Uh, dangers of complaining. You guys help me out. What's the pro exactly as we did with the laziness? Let's talk about content, a lack of contentment. Um, dangers. What are the problems? How, wh why is that not good? Yes, we might try to justify our reasons and then. Take it down a completely wrong path. You know, you, you, in, in, in psychology, self pity. You self pity yourself. You, you, something I'm, you feel, I feel bad for you. You're talking to yourself. You, you are less intelligent than them. That's why, you know. 
and, and, and you keep self-pity. And then you compare and you become angry at her. And all of a sudden, you meet her and you are aggressive. She didn't do anything. But the problem is I have been self-pity and I have been comparing myself to, to him who I think he's in a better shape and who knows what he is. And once I see him, I'm not nice to him. And that's sometimes we are like this. And I'm thinking, well, why are you dealing me like this? I can't tell you, of course, that I've been comparing and I felt bad and I feel bad. But again, the same thing as we said before. One of the most common reasons for depression, people are complaining all the time. People are not content with what they got. If he has muscles, he wants more muscles. If he is short, he wants to be tall. If he's tall, he wants to be short. Yeah, but let me and of you. course, all women want to lose weight. <laughs> even the thinniest of them. So they are not even happy with that. You know, the most common rising economy now is bariatric surgery. Bariatric surgery, which is uh, stomach banding and stomach stapling. You, you know that. You know what I'm talking about? Okay. The second most common is Jenny Greg and all the other things around it. <laughs> oh, everybody. Nobody's happy with his weight, men or women. Sorry for that. Yeah, but I, I just need to make uh, a clarification for the difference between uh, accepting my situation or being content of what I have now and being ambitious. Because to be ambitious yeah. means that you, you don't like what you have. That doesn't mean you don't you don't feel content. You feel content, but you're always wishing the better. That's yes. contradictory. That's not bad, right? Yeah. So, be, sorry, Amaria. I think, I, but it's, he's kind of contradicting himself because if you're content, you're going to be at least satisfied with what you have. Yeah, but but I no, think no, what, what my no, but 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 you are yeah, right too. That's too far. Being <laughs> ambitious, <laughs> if you. <laughs> 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 so. I'm not sure what's being said, but what I'm saying is um, being ambitious is a good thing. As long as you are happy with every step. You are happy, you're looking forward for the next step, but if it doesn't happen, you are content with what you got. You see my point? Like if you think of Joseph. Joseph. Joseph does not deserve jail, by the way. I mean, he was the best son of his dad. And he didn't do any bad thing. He has the striped shirt. Life was good. <coughs> he was, went from worst to worst to worst until he got bad. Okay? But at this point, somehow he was content with God with him and he was successful. And it was talking about him successful in jail. So I think, uh, it's just a guess, that Joseph was a was a content guy to the, to the extent that people want to come and talk to him. The prisoners, rather than us to say, can you, can I talk to you? I want to tell you a secret. If he was a grumpy guy, and a, nobody wants to talk to him. And they want to talk to him. They want to relate to this guy. He was content even with that particular thing. But that does not mean he wasn't ambitious, Yamar. I mean, he was looking forward for a better position. But every step, I'm OK. He was not complaining. And that's the point. Thank you. Um, uh, this is what I was talking about before, the factuals complaining. Can, can I ask you all, whenever you meet each other, you thank God? Just bring the word thank God about many things. And if we can infect each other with, with praising God, with thanking God, I think we will be eventually, all of us, a less complainer generation. One of the communities that when we get asked, we always say alhamdulillah, and then we start complaining. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I agree with you. Um, I want to talk about this. I don't talk about everyone, but there is a, a big saying. I mean, I'm not sure who said it, but uh, everybody knows this. So, like, you know, the blessing that is without increase is the blessing with, the blessing is without thanks is the blessing will not increase. Like, if you do not think about what you got, you will never improve, you will never have more of what you have. But eventually, yeah, I imagine God is so generous and he wants to give and give and give. 
But people are unhappy, unhappy, unhappy. And people are grumpy and complain about it all the time. So God sometimes says, okay, let me wait and see. I'll just watch them. I'm not going to give them for a week. What happens now? It's just he raises his hand, removes his grace, God forbid, leaves a skiddle, takes off his hand. And life is disaster. My point here is, See the people who are really in the worst, worst position. And when they thank God, I work in cancer. So I humbled myself so much in front of non non-profits, by the way. I'm not talking about only. I feel so small about some of these cancer patients who are happy and content, although their life survival they know and I know is counted by money. And some of them is not gone. I'm not saying it's always gone. But they are happy with, with, with the grandchild that's coming next to him. He's happy with, the, with, the, with his dog even. But the point here, we have much more. And we never really think except when everything's taken out from us. I did have all of this. Now all of a sudden I don't. And I'm Many years ago, almost all of you don't know it. I was very close to her, very close to her. She was 36 when she went. She, she had a dream one time. I was treating her for the worst pain in her bones, back. But one time, her mother came from Saeed, from Upper Egypt, and she, the, the mother cried. It was a bad scene, and what fa- start to almost like Job curse her days. You know Job at one time he cursed and she said take me away why are you doing this to me that's not fair although she was always always dead and Wafa told me a dream the next day. She didn't tell her mom but I told her mom later. She dreamt that she is in a nice place and somebody with a big hand has a Mizan Abani, I think it's a it's a big um, scale. big scale that has weights here and you know how it looks. Yeah, yeah, big scale, scale though, scale. like not the little thing for the gold, the big yeah. scale. Hold on, that one. Same yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just the scale. It looks like the one on the front of the court. That's very cool. <laughs> on one side there was. A lot of uh, necklaces, were, uh, earrings, uh, pearls, uh, a lot of precious stuff. And the other one, there was needles with a catra. surgery, And then she heard herself, she's saying in the dream, she heard herself say, that's too much. So some of the needles were taken, some of the whatever was taken, and in order to balance, some of the gawaish were taken, some, she was telling me this. So she woke up telling me, I will never complain anymore. <laughs> this is a very true story. I will, so I told her, what happened? Sa'id had told me, why did you let me complain? I told her, no, it's not, it's, it's too much, you are taking a lot. She said, no, I shouldn't be complaining. Why her children didn't complain? She told me this dream. And her point, I am, if I'm more content, I'm going to be more pleased. I'm accepting. All right. Mother Irini had the same experience. Uh, she was complaining at the end of her life about the pains she is getting or the tribulation she is living in her life. And Mancurios, the, the saint of her, uh, monastery or nunnery uh, appeared to her and told her, listen, if you are not accepting that pain, you are going to lose a lot of crowns in heaven. So she said, okay, leave it. It was about the same. Not for it, yeah. um, so number one, this is a treatment. I'm done. Okay. Ten minutes. Number one, count your blessings. <laughs> Remember your blessings. Every time you get angry, 
please, please, make it an exercise. When you get angry, when you get upset, when you get jealous, when you get comparing yourself, <coughs> count what you have compared to people who may not have. Count things that you got and you do not deserve. Yani, as the Matthew says uh, in the Gospel of Matthew, that he reigns upon the evil and the good. This is very nice. Recently, I, uh, I learned something. Why in the 5,000 feeding of the 5,000, why Christ insisted on collecting 12 baskets? Why? By the way, it was a lot of work feeding 15,000 people people taking seconds and thirds, <coughs> of course, it's a free food. And they are <laughs> so second and third and fish and what? They are very tired. Why? <laughs> Why did he insist collect and kiss up? Correct, I mean the fragments and, and 12 baskets. Why? One, yes, Sam. It's to get, um, so that the disciples that night would have uh, this blessing and miracle remnant to look at, to remember what yes. just happened. For so that 12, day. each one of them is going home with a basket. What did they do after the, the, the miracle, by the way? The fishing. They went and their boat was rocked till 3 a.m. in the morning until Christ appeared. And I think, this is not written, one of the things got them through until he came, we made a miracle. We have a memory right in front of us. He will come. I'm not sure when, but he must come. I mean, this is just a guess. But for them to go home with a memory, go home with a memory. Guys, when you read something in the Bible, and there is a verse that strike you today, helped you today, there was an occasion, an event coincides with that verse, write the date, keep the memory. You can go back five years ago and say, wow, this guy attacked me so bad. And on that night, I read this verse that <laughs> that the gates of hell will not come overcome. Yeah. And you were reading it. It's not like you opened yeah. it. You were reading through, but it's a memory. Guys, we do not keep memories. <laughs> like if I, if I have a memory with, with Michael, for example, and he stood with me when my car was stuck in the highway. And whenever I see him, I said, I will never forget the day that you stood with me in the highway when no one stopped to, to help me out in the highway. Guys, we have memories, but unfortunately, we, we, don't, we don't remember it. I'm done. Lastly, lastly, and this is what Shnuda was saying, or we were talking about, we really need to thank God more. We all need to thank God more. Please, guys, let us thank more complaining with goalless. I'm not going to tell you don't complain. But I just want you to all thank more. Thank God with everything about everything. Look at this verse, the word all. Giving thanks always for all things to God the Father. Look at this one. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing and give thanks. Just that. Make it a habit. You know, washing your teeth in the morning? You can't go out without washing your teeth. It's a habit to thank God. Yeah, and you meet some people, they, they get, oh, thank God. He didn't have to thank God. It's, a, it's in his head. Um, so I think this is it. Stop comparing. It's not greener on the other side of the you don't know what is the other people have problems with. You know, you don't know. I, I'm just passing through. Um, yani, rather than you compare or you become greedy or you, you, you start blaming God, why are you making the evil people better? and you are letting the righteous fall, just pray that God protect you. And don't worry about that. God likes more when you are more interested in your own 
problem rather than blaming God on how good he is to the others. You see? Sometimes don't lay up you're making these people succeed and making these people uh, successful and making these people more uh, money oriented, my, have more money. Just stay within yourself, thank God and pray, and that's all what you do. Okay, please forget the, 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 the past. Forget the yani uh, which are behind and reach forward. Yani, don't keep living in the past. Yeah, please forget the past. You failed. You had a a, a lovely relation and didn't want. It. You had a, a college that you wanted to didn't want. It. You had a parent that you're supposed to be good to and he's not good to. Just forget the past. Move forward. Thank for what you have. Don't keep worrying about what you didn't have. Um, yani, remember at the end of the day if you have diabetes or not if you are married or not if, if you are very handsome or not all of this doesn't matter really doesn't matter you get married or not you have children or not you have the best job or less job you know what Life will go on with or without these things. But what problem is, what if, if I'm not diabetic, I'm happily married, and I have a lot of ma uh, uh, money, and I have all of this, and I didn't go to hell. That's the, the problem. That's the problem. We need to possess ourselves. Okay? I think that's it. This is not important. Uh, any questions? Okay, so we, we, we put a few things. One, find the spiritual program and follow it. Like, for example, spiritual program says, I will read one chapter every day regardless. You come home late, you went to a movie theater, you went out to Applebee's and you turned home at 1 a.m., I still will read one chapter. That's a program. It's a program. Exactly like you will not go without one dinner. The program could, could include many things. I'm just making one item. It's a spiritual program. Second, avoid being infected by lazy people. So, for example, Michael Wahaba is, is very active and diligent. So that you associate with. I am very lazy. I am bringing you down. I'm making you stop running. Stop, war stop associating with me. Move forward with another guy who is less, less uh, lazy. Our problem is we do not run with the runners. We want to sit with the sitters. And at the end, the runners are running and the sitters are sitting. But that's <laughs> the big problem. We should help each other to grow, to go, not to pull each other down. And as youth, you, sh you should have all the power to push yourself up. Yeah. Not only three or four of you, every single one. Yeah. So spiritual program, um, associate with the runners. Number three, make yourself accountable. Like for example, for example, you have um, Joe, for example, is your closest friend. And he is a runner, he is diligent. You tell him, Joe, I want you to ask me every day, what did I read? Accountable. So you cannot be lazy. Because next morning he will ask you, what did you read last night, uh, Paul? If you don't, oh, I forgot to read. Say, why? We're supposed to read Matthew 3. You didn't read it. So make your, don't, don't find, you guys could be accountable to each other. You don't need a teacher or a, or a doctor or a priest. A teacher. I am but I think, like, I mean, what you're saying is obviously really important, but I also think it's not good to depend on other people in the ministry with the laziness because part of, I think, treating it is realizing that you need to get up and do it on your own. And I think sometimes, like, when you rely on people even to follow up with you, it's like you're being baby, kind of. You kind of have to do it on your own sometimes. Sure. I, I, I fully agree with you. Support system is very important. Yeah, it, it's not number one, yeah, Mariam. 
but I think it's number two or three. I mean, we need support. As much as we hinder each other, you can't imagine the power of helping each other. The, the big, the body system, they call it. The big brother, the big sister, the body system. It happens even in addiction. The world is using it today in addiction. They get an ex-smoker ex with a current smoker, and we sit with each other, and I tell you how I did it, and I watch out for you. If it happens to addicts, we cannot do it for a spiritual person. Now, I agree with you, it's not a baby, but it's accountability. Because you are almost not exposed, you're exposed to your best friend. And by the way, when I say body system, no boys for girls and no girls for boys, every gender to his own, and has to be a faithful, trustworthy person, not to get somebody who is completely lazy and you tell him, I want to be accountable to you, because you will feel good for yourself. I think, I think one problem is that sometimes we don't realize the power of God. Like sometimes we'll pray and then we're like, oh, okay, okay maybe he doesn't mean it. I don't know. I don't know if it, it'll come or not. But we have to realize that God is like, he's the one who created us. He's the one who's created everything. If we ask him, he's going to give us a lot of it, especially the spiritual. Like, what, what, what's going to make him stop and not give us anything? Like, we're, we're asking for something to help us get closer to him. And I think if we do that and if we believe that, He's going to give it to us. Yeah, he'll take it to do a problem. It's not going to come like that. In the last uh, high school retreat, we had a topic about addiction. All types of addiction. Not just the, the ones that you know, but even the ones that, the minor ones. And, and at one time in a workshop where boys were alone, girls alone, this came up. How can I stop this particular type of addiction? And at one time, the only thing just ask God. Because he has an interest in your salvation as much as you have an interest in your own salvation, even much more. So I'm going to work together. Yani, we, you, God, I am, please, Yani, three years I'm sitting down. Move me. I want to be, I want to grow knowing you. I want to grow in your knowledge. I want to love you more. I want to love people more. I want to stop this sin. So absolutely, you are, you are a very important point that the prayer or the Holy Spirit within us, like as he said, no one will ask for a fish and he gives him a stone. No one will ask for a, for a bread and he gives him a scorpion. He will give you a bread. He will give you a fish. You see? Because he doesn't know how to give except the good things. But you need to have a genuine willingness. Yes. Not uh, an eyes get out of us. Genuine willingness. I, I hope that's the whole point of the whole discussion is the, the hunt, the zeal. I believe if you have the Holy Spirit living inside you, it is a spirit of regeneration. He regenerates yourself inside of you, your mind. Your uh, ideas. Your yeah, but, but there is one thing I think Uncle Samir <coughs> meant, and I, I, I think if I, I know him very well, I think that's what he meant. In my opinion, I think that's his opinion. We can help each other significantly to get better. And we are bringing each other down significantly also. And that's the big problem. A big group of people could become the best growing group. Because I see him doing this, and I see her doing this, and I want to do it. But if I see everybody doing, and even if I want to grow, I'm dying. <laughs> so I think that's also the power. Any other question, guys? Thank you, Dr. Haney.